Have you ever read a comic or a manga or watched an anime where you look at the title or the cover of the thing and then you immediately go, okay, this is definitely just what the creator is into. Yeah, that's what we're going to be discussing in this video today, because comics and anime and stuff like that can still be fun to watch, provided they come with substance. The proper word, or at least the safer work word for it, is fantasy fulfillment. Boys, everyone has a fantasy that they want to express in some form or another, and my favorite way of seeing these things are in the form of comics and anime. Some fan Fantasies are pleasant to witness because they're well-told or well-drawn comics. Other fantasies are things that should not effing exist at all and make me want to freaking kill someone. But regardless of that, in this video I want to set a record straight on something. All across my webtoon read-throughs, I always make fun of comics that only serve as brain-dead substance-free romances that only serve to be estrogen bait for dumbass girls like I always say again and again. But at the end of the day, everyone has fantasies and fetishes. And furthermore, there's nothing wrong with making comics out of them. I I mean, fantasies are like literally 99% of all media. Well, the, the cool ones, anyway. Oh, and yes, I actually am dead ass serious when I say that your fetishes can help you produce cool comics. I mean, a lot of my favorite anime and manga are very clearly just that. So, yeah. Boys, look, the reason why I make fun of those little fantasy fulfillment comics in my read throughs isn't just because, oh hey, they're just fantasies that I don't like, therefore it's, it's dumb. No, 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 that's not it at all. The reason why is because of something that I think we all let fly over our head. It's because they are not tastefully done. Let me show you a perfect example of bad, tasteless fantasy fulfillment. This is My Guardian Demon. I already made an entire video read-through about this, so I'll keep it quick and I'll keep it blunt. The fantasy fulfillment present in this comic is a straight-up cliché present in many romance webtoons as a whole. The very comforting fantasy for girls that you can have a super strong, super powerful, sexy demon man as your boyfriend, and he's super pushy about it, but also super protective of you, and you basically will never have to have any form of urgency or work ever again, because with him around, your life will be simple, but also since he's still a demon, it's also going to be super exciting too. Yeah, conceptually, it's a very commonplace fantasy on Webtoon, so in order to make for an interesting comic, you'd have to provide something fresh to make this stand out. And, well, there is nothing interesting to make this comic in particular stand out at all. You know, aside from the very, very effing gross non-consensual content present in this damn thing. My Guardian Demon's fantasy fulfillment bum rushes at a breakneck pace in terms of plot, sloppily introducing paper-thin ass characters and uninspired world building, all for the sake of speed running to the tasteless fantasy fulfillment of non-consensual demon love as you witness this weird ass dude forcefully grabbing on her and kissing her and all this nonsense. It's freaking gross. And yeah, that's obviously the biggest no-no that makes this comic an automatic piece of junk, but it goes deeper than that in this discussion that I'm trying to bring up. Okay, the world in question in terms of this comic is just generic diet anime high school with some supernatural elements carelessly tossed in with no form of substance. And the main bad guy that the demon dude is supposed to be protecting our resident main girl from literally doesn't even have a character design, bro. It's just a black cloud of smoke that just appears and says random evil stuff. I still remember how much disbelief I was in when I first discovered this. Let me make something clear. The reason why this comic features very bad fantasy fulfillment is because, well, okay, it's gross and toxic, yes, but like I said, it goes further than that. You see how the main dude is a generic ass anime protag with no real backstory outside of an uninspired reincarnation plot like the, you know, like the author just watched two episodes of Inuyasha, then just got up and said, yo, I can do that. You see how the main girl is a walking block of wood for of any personality outside of the basic emotional response that one would make to some random ass dark hero forcing himself on top of her. You see how the main bad guy of this garbage is so incredibly uninspired that he literally doesn't even have a character design? What I'm trying to get at is that this is all one big pile of nothing. No flavor, nothing interesting, nothing creative, nothing inspired. The reason why this comic is a bad piece of fantasy fulfillment is because the fantasy that it's trying to put on display has zero substance. It's already a gross comic that constantly tries to depict to the audience that non-consent is cool and romantic, 
But what's even sadder is that even outside of that toxicity that I mentioned, if you put that aside and move past that, this comic is the biggest nothing burger on the planet. Ask yourself a question, why should you read this when the fantasy that it's trying to be executed here has no substance? And since I can't help but bring up Lore Olympus every single goddamn video, I guess I can bring that up here too. I won't spend too much time on this either, I'll make it super brief. The fantasy of Lore Olympus is just as the description of this webtoon says, witness what the gods do after dark, or whatever. Apparently, what the gods do after dark is just normal, random, modern day things that normal people do, except you occasionally sugarcoat it with random magic BS that doesn't matter and doesn't change the plot in any way. Lore Olympus tries to execute a spicy fantasy as well, but the fantasy in question is dumb and lame and bad and boring. I shall ask the question again, why should you read this when the fantasy in question attempting to be executed bears zero substance? That's the point that I'm trying to make. I know I'm super duper critical on my YouTube channel because I never have the opportunity to talk about things that I like, even though there are plenty of webtoons that I do like, but... <sighs> My standards are not high here, okay? They're really not. It doesn't take a lot to entertain me, despite my entire channel probably making it look like otherwise. It's also really not hard to execute fantasy fulfillment well. Like, it really isn't. There's actually plenty of comics on Webtoon Canvas that do it just right. In fact, let me show you one. Boys, this is a Webtoon called The Dragoness Says Sit. This comic is... Well, um, it's very clearly just the creator's fetish, right? Like, I, <laughs> I mean, look at the freaking title. Look at the cover image. But, I, I, but, but, you know, despite that fact, still, the comic is actually good. Like, honestly, it's more entertaining and has more actual substance than, like, 50% of the Webtoon Originals catalog. Let me explain how right here. The comic centers around the sudden acquaintanceship between a social outcast loser human and a dominant but also very compassionate dragon lady and her massive ass ass thighs. The art style is a very appealing hybrid cartoon style that I want to say reminds me of insert popular Disney movie or TV series here, but I shall not continue on that because comparison is the thief of joy. Point being, the art style is good and unique and I'd be able to recognize it a mile away. You see? Look at that. That's already a big piece of substance right there. And the checklist actually only gets bigger from there. The world building of this baby is strong as well. Following the traditional historical myths of humankind perceiving dragon folk as monolithic gods, God creatures when in reality they have their own simple society and our resident female lead is seemingly below average by her own people's standards. I'm not going to tell you specifically what happens in the story but those two things that I brought up are the entire reason why the two characters even meet. The plot's own lore brings them both together and while that is something that is to be expected and also a very very basic piece of writing that literally everyone should be doing when making their comic narratives I'm still gonna point that out because that very clearly indicates that this dude, the author of this comic, cares about the story that he is working on. He's not just, oh, you know, speed running the plot so we can get to all the spicy bits or some nonsense like that, such as 95% of Webtoon Originals, <coughs> boyfriends. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say here. Another good example of said world building is the magic being used as a substitute for technology in this. It is a cliche that is present in most isekai medieval fantasies like Mage and Demon Queen, but in this comic, it's actually handled really well in comparison. Uh, not trying to talk mess about Mage and Demon Queen, that is one of my favorite comics by the way. Look, you know how most medieval fantasy webtoons and isekai anime have magic-ish stuff, but the magic stuff in question is just a cheap excuse for them to put modern technology in the damn comic because they're too lazy to think up of something creative? Yeah, well, this comic does it right because the hybrid technology in question actually has its own purposes outside of just, oh hey, that's just a smartphone, but magic-y. You know what I mean? And I can't help but love that. I actually had an entire paragraph dedicated to explaining how the plot unfolds, but I actually decided to delete it and not say it here because I want you guys to actually go off and read this thing and develop an opinion of your own. While I am only using this comic to prove a point about the subject matter of this video, I actually enjoyed my reading of this comic outside of that. And furthermore, while I did only bring up a couple of positive points for this comic, I brought those specific things up to prove a point. Despite the fact that the author clearly just wants an anime tier steamy romance between a social outcast human and a dragon girl, and also her massive ass thighs, the story is filled to the brim with a lot of extra substance and logistics on top of that. Solid world building, well-designed characters, and an ongoing plot that keeps you invested outside of the author's obvious fetish. 
Those are the things that carry this webcomic to coolness. And that is how you do fantasy fulfillment correctly. Lore Olympus has fantasy fulfillment, but it sucks because at the end of the day, the fantasy in question is just normal modern society, but occasionally you go see some random magic go off every few hundred chapters. Characters don't do anything interesting regarding the fantasy setting aside from do random ass Jersey douchebag Kardashian partying. My Guardian Demon has fantasy fulfillment, but it sucks at that too. Because the uninspired fantasy of having a dark hero douchebag hover around you is generic anime tier nonsense. Meanwhile, the Dragoness says Sit attempts fantasy fulfillment and it succeeds. Because it introduces an interesting medieval fantasy setting full of creatively designed characters, interesting narratives, and a tastefully handled fantasy. This dude's personal fetish of being suddenly close acquaintances with a thick dragon waifu was the byproduct of making a really well-made comic full of action substance, courtesy of the author's literary competence, good eye for character details, and his neat pseudo-cartoon art style. As per usual, I always use big words a lot, but it's really not that complicated. TLDR, the fantasy fulfillment is fine. Making a comic based off your own fetishes, that's actually fine. Just execute them tastefully. As long as what you did is tastefully done in your artwork and your narrative, then you, my friend, are golden. That's gonna be all for this video, boys. This is Blacklight Jack signing out. Thanks for watching. We've reached the end of the video, so it's time for the Patreon roll call. My 15 or more supporters are Ale Dragon, Stormy Knight, and Jack G. My $10 supporters are Agish. Art Blocked, Candid Monkey, Charlie Kieran, Daniel Ivy, Detective Nanama, Phydra Galaxy, Hidden Host, Kazu Cool, Kill Pop Splatterpunk, Klutzy Ninja Kitty, Mighty Beware, Pai Yan, Ponyboy VA, Skyer, Syndrome 7, and Vincent Lundy. And of course, let's not forget our $5 supporters. They are appreciated just as much as our $10 Patreons. If you'd like to be in the credits of this video as well, as well as have access to a small library of Patreon exclusive webtoon read throughs, all you gotta do is support me with $5 on Patreon. This is Blacklight Jack signing out. You guys have a good one.